Here's your Money Briefing for Wednesday, August 2nd. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. When it's time to distribute family heirlooms, planning the right way can help avoid awkward and painful battles. Wall Street Journal personal finance reporter Ashley Ebling joins me. So, Ashleya, let's start with the big picture. A lot of the divvying up of family heirlooms is determined by what's been stated in a person's will. How does someone draw up a will? Well, typically you'll work with an estate lawyer to draw up a will and or a trust. But it's interesting, a lot of estate lawyers gloss over the stuff, the personal property is what it's called in estate tax lingo. But make sure you talk to the lawyer about your stuff, not just bank accounts and real estates, but the jewelry, your collections, that kind of thing that you want to know where it's going to go. And typically a will would say, I leave my personal property to my spouse. If no spouse survives me to my children to be divided as they agree or to be divided equally. But you can see right off with that kind of vague language, you're going to cause problems. Yeah. When someone lists their heirlooms and who the recipients will be, is that legally binding? If it's spelled out in the will or trust, yes, it is legally binding. And there's also this great option in many states to leave what's called a personal property memo. And on that, you literally list the things out with the item and who it's going to go to and make sure you sign and date it. If that's incorporated into your will or trust, it will be legally binding. If not, it's something the person handling your estate would take into consideration. So what are some of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're dividing up their belongings among their heirs? So this unspecific language in a will or trust can cause rifts. Also not knowing the value of stuff. It's often parents might have things and the kids know nothing about it or couldn't care less about it, but it turns out they're these really valuable things. Who would determine what the value of heirlooms are? So in that case, you'd need to call in an appraiser. And I talked to this one woman, for example, whose late 98-year-old dad, he'd lived in like an assisted living apartment And there was what she thought was a knickknack on a kitchen counter, but an appraiser came in and it turned out it was a sculpture by this Israeli-Canadian artist that was appraised at more than $4,000. That same appraiser had a son call him. He'd found this, what he thought was like costume jewelry under a bed in his late mother's apartment, and that sold at auction for $15,000. It was an unusual gold cuff bracelet with these embossed jewels on it. Oh, wow. So the dollar differences between what you think it is and what it actually is worth could be a lot. Exactly. So what should go into the process of selecting the person who will handle your estate when it's time to distribute your belongings? There you want to pick someone you really trust and specify how much power they'll have. Say they could act as a mediator if family members fight over something, for example. There was this one case where an appraiser found a diamond wedding ring and the heirs like, were really happy that he found it, but at odds over who should get it. And then the lawyer handling the estate, he ended up drawing a name out of a hat to pick the winner who got it. So that's an example where you really should specify it. Is there a good place to start in that selection process when you're trying to find the person who will handle your estate? Generally, if it's a family with parents and children, you would pick one of the children and It's not necessarily the oldest child. That's a mistake people make. It's someone who has to really be willing to spend the time to do this. I talked to this one man whose father died. There were 19 heirs, including stepchildren and friends. His wife actually like stepped aside shortly before his death, and they made it that the son would manage distributing everything in the trust, knowing that he said his dad said, I know you can handle everyone. I want to help in the stress of dealing with the people who aren't going to be happy. Is it common for a family to choose someone outside the family to to manage all this? That can work too. And so very often if it's a high-end estate, you would also have a lawyer or an estate administrator at a trust company who would help as an outside impartial person that would help the heirs. Now, what if you want a particular item to go to a particular person? How would that work? So that's really important where you would either use one of these personal property memorandums if it's allowed in your state. And that's why you have to go to this state lawyer in your state to make sure you're doing everything right, because every state law is different. And you want to actually spell them out as a specific bequest. And what if that person is in line to receive an heirloom, but they don't want it? Well, then it would typically go back into the state to be doled out. However, everything else is doled out. They could potentially accept it and then donate it and maybe get a charitable tax deduction if it's just that you don't want it, but you'd like the value of it still. Are these hard and fast rules in estate planning or 
Can somebody be a little creative in the process? So definitely the specific bequest, that's their hard and fast rules along things like that. But once you get to the divvying out all the other stuff that's not specified in a memorandum or individually, then you can be super creative. There are five siblings. I talked to one who was managing an estate and they played high card wins. Basically, they picked a deck of cards out of a cabinet in their late parents' house. And the son handling the estate said he lost out on a TV, a set of dishes and a drill press. He didn't have hard feelings. That was just what they agreed on and it worked out. It doesn't always work out though. So another case, two sisters both wanted a ring and an estate settlement officer in that case came in, made a duplicate ring, mixed it up with the original and then gave one to each daughter. So neither knew who had the original ring. One other case I love, there was a family cookbook with handwritten notes by family members in it. And there the personal representative had them draw straws. So the child with the large straw got the original cookbook and the other children all got photocopies. Wow. So there is room for creativity. But possibly disgruntled or heirs with lingering resentments because maybe you should have left the family cookbook to the one heir who you felt would really want it the most. That's Wall Street Journal personal finance reporter Ashley Ebling. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. Thank you.